fresh year. And what better way to celebrate the downturn in weather and general misery of the season than staying inside and booting up Icarus with your crewmates? Hello there, my name is Swallow and I am an alcoholic. Welcome to the Icarus update. Oh, and what's this? A new patch? Oh, you shouldn't have. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 1.3.5 patch of Icarus, the first update of the new year, due to be released on the 3rd of February. Coming up, menu improvements, audio enhancements, alterations to the Artemis, and sweeping changes to objective-based maps. Delightful! Yet more improvements to the user interface. This time around, Muse addressed several common complaints from players in relation to the UI of both the lobby and the game itself. For starters, we're free! No more, my friends, shall the tyranny of the quick join button plague our every click. Nay, we shall no longer have to worry about accidentally clicking that foul, accursed slab and being whisked half a world away to a zone plagued by latency and mostly empty lobbies. In 1.3.5, Quick Join is being removed entirely, replaced by the Play button, which functions pretty much exactly as the old Matches button. The Match list has been rearranged to show matches still in lobby above matches currently in progress in order to provide more visibility to those currently in waiting. It turns out that Muse seriously underestimated the sheer player demand for Icarus over the holidays. The previous state of affairs was actually forcing match lobbies off the front page in favour of in-progress games. Shocking stuff, I think you'll agree. But still, they fixed it. Which is nice. While we're on the topic, the player logbook has been condensed. You'll find the majority of the old summary page of the progression tab in the log tab, which means that, if you're anything like me, you'll only have to weep over the utter horror of one page of your personal statistics. Christ, how did my accuracy get that low? I'm <laughs> not that bad. Aha, now here is something that's been causing the balancing team a headache or two, and I really can't blame them. CTF. The objective-based maps have, in the past, tended to list heavily towards team setups possessing both the speed to take the points and the firepower to defend them. Sensible teams, in other words. However, dislodging such teams once they have control over the points can be a real pain in the Orkham. Patching is clearly required. And patching has been provided! The numbers have been fudged across the board to allow teams a fighting chance to get their cap in. Should they manage to dislodge the defenders, of course. However, these matches have also been shortened, with the number of points required for victory being slashed dramatically. The affected maps are the monstrous flayed hills, the icy reaches of Anglian raiders, labyrinths twisted wreckage, raid on the refinery, and possibly the most requested gameplay change since Skyworlds, and a map I can personally guarantee that at least three of the Muse team dislike as much as the rest of us, Desert Scrap. If you've missed the notes up on the screen, you can rewind once more to indulge in my dulcet tones. Or, if the thought of that gives you a bit of a headache, and I really can't blame you, feel free to check out the official forum post where the numbers are posted out for your migraine-free enjoyment. Speaking of migraines, I am sure that by now, at least a few of you must have come across the players that will, unfortunately, just not shut up. Be it playing loud music, screaming anti-Semitic sentiments, or just being generally annoying, we've seen our fair share of trolls. And now, there's a temporary solution to this rather awkward situation. Now, when pressing tab during an active match, you'll see two extra elements. Firstly, you'll now be able to see each player's numerical rank in their chosen class, in case you didn't see that in the lobby somehow. There is also a brand new clickable icon next to each member of your crew, and, in the event that you're a captain of a ship, you'll also see the same icon around allied captains. Clicking this will mute them! It's really that simple. Let's look at an example. Uh, Joseph. You'll notice that this man is angry. It may have something to do with our previous performance, or that we're currently losing the game. Or it may have something to do with the fact that he did not enjoy a bowl of relaxing Aubran, and thus is completely full of it. We'll never know. He is getting rather tiresome though. But, with the flick of a switch, we can turn him off. <sighs> Isn't that better? Science. And finally, we come to a section I like to call Nerf and Surf. Probably. There may be a better name for it later. In the 1.3.5 patch, the Artemis light rocket launcher is being toned down, with a reduced muzzle speed and area of effect. Its damage, however, is unchanged, so don't expect those Artemis junkers to stop drilling holes in your rear engines anytime soon. As long as they're aimed correctly, of course. Well, that's it for this time. 1.3.5 will be active tomorrow, Monday the 3rd of February, so be sure to drop in to see the latest changes for yourself. 
As always, you can find a full list of fixes and alterations on the forums, linked in the video description, including details on fixes involving spectator mode and a solution to floating above guns and engines, particularly on the Spire. All that remains is for me to bid you farewell, and wish you the best of luck out there in the untamed skies. As always, I've been Swallow, and this was the Icarus Update. Stay safe.